Hey guys, welcome back to the Addictively Speaking Podcast. I'm James, I'm your host. This is season two, second episode. It's going to be called Accepting and Accountability and Sustainability. And um, so basically, accepting. I accept that I have a drinking problem. I accept that I'm an alcoholic. I accept those things. I um, It's a tough thing to do is to admit fault in oneself. Um, I think for a long time in my addiction, in the beginning, it was fueled by depression and I felt horrible and I was struggling mentally to deal with things that had happened. I had a trauma that happened and it was quite difficult to process that information and not knowing how to do that was very difficult. Um, so it was a real, real hard time for me. And I think later in my addiction, I surrounded myself with people who were doing the same behaviors as me, drinking heavily, um, you know, getting into some shit, fights and all that kind of stuff. Um, so when people would say, you know, do you, did I think I had a drinking problem? I'd say no, because, you know, no, I, w- I wasn't accepting that. It wasn't to me. I was surrounded by people who are doing the same exact behaviors as me and they didn't seem to have a drinking problem. So why would I think that I had a drinking problem? Um, and I think like when you find recovery or you get to that point where you're willing to say, shit, something might be wrong here. You know, I might need to make some changes and accept those things in yourself, then you can start the process of getting clean and getting free from the drugs and alcohol that were numbing you, that you were using to fix all the internal things that were going on that you weren't dealing with or that you didn't think you could deal with. And I think once I accepted the fact that I I didn't drink like other people, with the way I drank wasn't normal. Once I accepted that fact and I stopped letting people tell me, no, man, you're fine. I don't know what your problem is. You just, sometimes you just take it a little too far. Sometimes, all the time, there wasn't a time I didn't take it too far. So by everybody, by other people, like letting other people's opinions validate me in saying, you know, in, in, in letting me continue on that path, you know, it, I did it for years because I let other people say, and it made me feel better. You know, it, it was more about preserving, you know, me, because if I had to say I'm an alcoholic, then that's admitting a huge thing in your life. And saying that out loud comes with a lot of shit with it. There's a lot of stigma that goes along with that. Um, I might not look like your typical alcoholic. I might not behave like a typical alcoholic, but I was a binge drinking monster that would just fuck up anything in his path. I was like, I was like the drunk Tasmanian devil. Like I would just spin around being like, just smashing shit in my way, causing the most amount of damage possible to myself and my family and my friends. Like I put a lot of hurt out there and uh, I've been doing a couple TikTok videos and I I had somebody comment on one of my videos and, you know, I was saying how I had hurt a lot of people and I I might've put some people in some hospitals and, you know, I I did some damaging things and they, they asked a question like, how do you, you know, how do you live with that guilt? Like, how do you live with the things that you've done? And the biggest thing I can say is that I've accepted that those things have happened. I accepted that I'm responsible for the things that I've done. I own that shit now. That is what I am. That is what I've done. But um, I don't live in that space. I don't live there anymore. I've moved way past that. So, yeah, it it was shitty, the things I did. I can't live there. 
and I can't dwell on that. I won't be able to progress in my recovery if I just sit and fester in those moments um, because it's happened. It's happened. It's done. I've accepted so many things. I've accepted that I have shitty coping skills. Um, I suffer from depression and anxiety. Um, I've just accepted a lot of things that I think I didn't feel comfortable accepting before. And when you have to say those things out loud to other people as well, um, they just kind of don't want to feel different or out of place, you know, being somebody that is an alcoholic, you know, uh, I find it weird now because if you tell somebody that you're in recovery or that you're sober, they look at you like you're strange, like you, like, why, why, why would you not drink? And then I have to kind of like basically explain who I was to them um, because I don't know that person because that person isn't around anymore. I'm a different person. I've built a different life. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's explaining these things to people and they just kind of look at you like you're very odd. Like you don't drink, not even a little bit. No, because if I do, I turn into an animal. I don't want to be that person. I never want to be that person again. I've accepted that. And that's what helps me keep moving forward in my recovery is just the accepting of these things that I can't control. I've accepted these things. So now I have to learn how to maintain them and sustain them, you know, and accountability, my accountability. I am accountable for my actions. My actions are my own choices. So I have to deal with those consequences. In addiction, I wasn't accountable for the things that I did. I blamed it on other things. I blamed it on the alcohol. I blamed it on, you know, whatever. I didn't accept the responsibility of my actions, whether it was getting arrested or getting a DUI or whatever. I blamed it on other things. Well, I lost a job. Fuck that job. It wasn't my fault. There was this, this, and this going on. It all boiled down to my drinking, and I didn't want to... I didn't want to take accountability for that. I didn't want to own that. I just wanted to, that was what it was. But I didn't want to have to say, those were my choices. Those are my actions. I just blamed it on the alcohol. Well, I got too drunk. I lost a job. What am I going to do? I need money. That's shit. My life is shit. Everything is shit. You know, and you get trapped in this circle that just keeps going around of terrible things that keep continually happening. And I wouldn't take any responsibility for any of those things. I wouldn't be accountable for any of that shit. I'd blame it on so many other things. And, you know, I, I'd make my mother feel guilty, um, you know, that I couldn't pay for my cell phone or that I couldn't pay um, part of my rent or whatever the case was, whatever I was doing. So I would use that to manipulate her to get money so I could pay my cell phone or maybe part of my cell phone and then use the rest for alcohol, use the rest to go out drinking. Um, you know, and I feel shitty about that. That was a real shitty thing to do. And I use that because my mother just wanted me to be safe and to be okay and to get better. And I, I took advantage of that, which is what almost every addict does to anybody who loves them in that situation. We learn to manipulate situations to our advantage. And then we also, you know, don't ever take accountability for any of that stuff. We just say, you know, you, you don't understand what it's like. This bad things keep happening to me, whatever, whatever, you know, but in the end, I did those things. Those are my actions. Those are my choices. That's what I was doing in those moments. Yeah, it was shitty. I shouldn't have done it. But I had a problem. I wasn't willing to admit that I had a problem. But I had a problem. A definite problem. So once I've accepted that, 
I got into recovery and I, I, t- I took accountability for everything, for all of it, for all the bad shit I did. I tried to make as many apologies as I could. I tried to rectify some situations, maybe bridges that I had burned or fix things. And then once I took accountability, I started to be able to build my recovery and build the foundation of, of my recovery was with acceptance and accountability. I started to build this thing and it was easier to be sober because I was accountable for all my shit. My choices, my actions. Um, I lost a job. It was my fault. Whatever happened. So um, I owned all that stuff. And then it's like sustaining that stuff over periods of time. So I've spent 11 years in sobriety. So I've had to manage, you know, my accountability over 11 years. So you know, sometimes that, that, that's difficult is to, to be accountable for all your actions and sustain that for, you know, 10 years, especially when you're, you're always going through ups and downs. There's always peaks and valleys and, um, you know, triggers in life that push you, um, into places that you might feel uncomfortable, especially, you know, with addiction, you know, all it takes is one, right? And then you're, you know, my biggest fear is, is that, you know, that I would somehow have one drink and turn into an absolute piece of shit again. Um, you know, that, that's my like biggest fear is that, that, that something would, would rock me to that point. And, uh, luckily for me, it hasn't happened. Um, I've, I have never, I've never relapsed. I've stayed strong and I've just sustained my life. Um, I've sustained the way I manage my life, the way I cope with things. You know, I've, I've, I've built better coping skills. I've, I've, um, you know, I've learned to, to, to work out and go to the gym and to manage myself that way. I've, got a job, I've built a career, um, and I've really locked myself in. I have a family that I care for tremendously. I have two little boys that are my absolute world. I have an amazing wife. Um, you know, they give me every reason to stay sober. They hold me accountable. They help me sustain this situation that I have in my life. Um, they're, they're my anchoring points, you know? I live a life now that I thought was never possible before. And now I've built something that I've done it. I've done it myself. I built a life that I didn't think I was worthy enough to have at the time. So I remember being in addiction and thinking, I'll never have anything. I don't deserve anything. I'm, you know, I'm worthless. I'm hopeless. I'll end up in jail. I'll end up dead. You know, there's that, there's that feeling of, you know, despair all the time around you. And it's tough to live in that space. You know, it's tough to be that person and to live there. And um, if there's anybody that's listening that actually, lives in that space or that has those thoughts, you know, there is help out there. There are suicide prevention lines. Um, you know, there's, there's places you can go for treatment, you know, therapy, um, and things like that have, have helped me tremendously. I've, I've gone to countless therapists, um, about different things in my life, you know, because I feel like anything I can do to help myself get better, or be a better person is um, is worth doing. Um, even if I, I can only do therapy for like short periods of time, it costs a lot of money to have your issues worked out. Um, and sometimes, you know, it just takes a couple sessions where you kind of get a lot of stuff off your chest or things that you've been holding in. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you, you bury and you push down and, 
you know, I think I have a lot of that inside of me. And I think that alcohol help perpetuate that stuff and bring it all out and let it let it free because I didn't I had lower inhibitions and I you know I could let out a lot of stuff that was built up inside of me which made me quite dangerous because if you feel like you have nothing to live for and then you have all this shit buried inside of you that you just let rip out bad things happen um, but luckily now I've learned that I've accepted the things in myself that I can't control my addiction with alcohol. I, um, I can't do it. I can't drink. I'll never be able to. I've accepted that and I'm fine with it. I never, I don't ever want to drink again. I've built a life for myself that I never thought I could have. I live there now. That's the space I occupy. That's where I live. My family, they're my anchoring points. They're the people that keep me locked in and on this road to recovery. And, you know, I think that doing this podcast has become therapeutic for me in a way because I get to share some stuff with people and hopefully that there are people listening that have um, these similar things that they can kind of relate to. So um, I'll, I'm going to continue to do it. I have a, a guest lined up in the next couple of days. Um, and she is based in the UK and created a recovery academy, which um, she trains people to be recovery coaches, which is pretty amazing um because those people can kind of recover and go out there and help other people find recovery which you know over here in the uk isn't like a huge thing like there's not a huge deal done with people that are struggling with addiction um it's not like in the u.s where there's a lot of rehab facilities and then recovery communities where people get together and you know, it helps people with their recovery and to, to maintain and sustain that over long periods of time. It's good to be in with these groups like NA and, and AA and stuff like that. There are meetings over here, but there's not like that community, that tiny little community of people that kind of, you know, you know, where I was at, there was, there was a, you know, a handful of us and we did like community projects and things like that. But over here, that's not so much the case. So, She's she started something from the ground up and built this academy to train people to be recovery coaches. So I've been lucky enough to speak to her and get her to come on the podcast. Um, hopefully in the next week or so, um, I'll get an interview out with her um, that I can bring to you guys and hopefully, you know, share share her story about the recovery academy and her her journey in recovery and recovery based things so this has been accepting accountability and sustainability thanks for watching thanks for listening if you can subscribe if you can like share do all the things that you can to help promote this um i'm on TikTok. i'm on facebook i'm on instagram i'm on youtube check out all the the socials you know, keep liking, sharing, supporting, um, because this, this is to help other people. This isn't, you know, to make money or to, to get YouTube famous. This is, this is just to help other people find recovery, build a life and do things that they never thought possible. So that's what it's about, man. Recovery. Yeah. Me and my boys going crazy in the street Like MJ But we ain't never gonna fade away We ain't never gonna fade away Me and my boys going crazy in 23 Like MJ But we ain't never gonna fade away We ain't never gonna fade away Me and my boys going crazy in 23 Like MJ but we ain't never gonna fade away We ain't never gonna fade away
fading away Oh no, oh, oh, oh no Me and my boy going crazy in 23 Like MJ, yeah We ain't never gonna fade away We ain't never gonna fade away Oh no, oh, oh, oh no Me and my boy going crazy in 23 Yeah, like MJ but we ain't never gonna fade away We ain't never gonna fade away Oh no, oh, oh no Me and my boys going crazy in 23 Yeah, I am gay But we ain't never gonna fade away We ain't never gonna fade away Yeah.